I don't know how I got through it, but somehow I made art for 30 days with a pack of index cards. I'm Erin from Nubby Notes, and today I'll be showing you all of the art that I made in the past month. Throughout June, I've been participating and making art for a challenge that I heard about from Hodge and Podge Studio on Instagram. The art challenge I participated in was called the Index Card A Day Challenge, and it was by Tammy Garcia of Daisy Yellow, who also goes by Gypsy999 on Instagram. The challenge itself is pretty straightforward. You have a pack of index cards and you get to make art on it for a certain amount of days. There is a prompt list that goes with it, but it's not very rigid and you're able to kind of go off of that prompt list, which is what I ended up doing. You may also notice that the challenge is for 61 days in total. I only got through 30 days, which was about halfway through, but I'm impressed that I got through that much um, regardless. <laughs> And overall, the challenge is kind of what you make of it. So for somebody who kind of gets in her head when it comes to specific challenges and following prompts and lists and series, this challenge was really helpful in helping me get out of my head and just to create art for a certain amount of days. I've always viewed myself as more of a crafter than an artist, and I've kind of let that self-limiting belief make me feel like I'm not able to paint or I'm not able to sketch or, or be as artistic or, or express my creativity in different ways. So I wanted to use this challenge as a way to break that mold and tell myself that crafters are artists too, and it's okay for me to paint, it's okay for me to sketch, it's okay for me to go out of um, what I usually do. Um, so I wanted to try that here. And with that, why don't we get into it? I wanted to start off the challenge easy and kind of ease my way into this whole 30 day process. So I first started with this piece here. It's a paper craft of a little bunny on a carrot. I like cute things and I also was feeling like doing paper crafts this day. So this piece was a no brainer. For the second piece, I was going for something a bit more abstract. I really wanted to do a piece with peonies and this is what it ended up looking like. I first started with the checker background with color pencils, and then I painted on the peonies with acrylic paint and then added extra details with more color pencils. The acrylics don't lie. <laughs> there is a little shadow of what looks like a lamp in that right corner, and that's exactly what that was. I originally wanted to do a lamp up there, and then I changed my mind and I decided to paint over it. For the third day, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, so I grabbed some Sharpies and then kind of just went with it. A while ago, I tried Zentangle for the first time, which is just a structured way of making different patterns. And I kind of used that as inspiration for this card here. For this challenge, I really didn't want to put myself into a box because I knew that if I did that, I would probably give up the challenge. So I just decided to pick up a card each day and figure out the design from there. This is another mixed media piece with me using some acrylics and color pencils. You'll kind of see throughout all of these cards here, um, a theme in all of the materials that I like to use. And I, I kind of learned that for myself as well as I was going through this process, that I really like using acrylics and colored pencils. The way that they look together, for some reason, to me, just makes it look really cool. So that is this piece here. And for this next piece here, I wanted to paint a trellis with some vines and flowers kind of climbing up it. I used some colored pencil for the bricks in the back and as well for the details. I used some Sharpie for the trellis itself and acrylic paints for all of the flowers and vines. And for this one here, it was inspired by the flower fields in Japan. I was still trying to figure out how to work on, I guess, distance when you're painting. So I ended up just using my small brush to make a bunch of dots to kind of symbolize the flowers inside of the flower field. I think it looked okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna like every single piece of all of this challenge, which is what I ended up telling myself, but I think it's all right. <laughs> and then on the flip side, I made this piece, which I think is one of my favorites. It is a succulent inside of a pot, and I used a couple of references here for this one, and I think it turned out really cool. I used some acrylics again and colored pencils, um, and I really like the way that the finished piece turned out. Throughout this challenge, I also really got into like Sharpie line work, and that's kind of what I did with this piece here. I did a bit of like cross hash shading or, or hash shading here for all these origami pieces, and I really like the way that they look. 
It's a very subtle change, but I used a couple different Sharpies, which changed the line weight of all of these pieces, and I think it added a lot of variation. For this next piece, I wanted to see if there was a way for me to kind of make a visual representation of what music is like for me, and, and it ended up turning into scribbles, so I don't know if that says a lot about my music taste, but <laughs> I like it. I think it's really cool, it's simple, and it's nice. And this next piece was inspired by, I think it's called neurographic art. Um, it's just kind of letting your, it's instead of word vomit, it's, it's brain vomit, <laughs> but for art. And so I kind of just drew a bunch of circles and then, and then I kept drawing more circles and coloring it in with color pencils and then adding Sharpie and then adding a white gel pen. So layers on layers on layers. And this one's really mesmerizing to look at. I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> This one is more of that Sharpie outlining or lining technique, I guess. I don't really know what it's called, but I like the way that it looks. I, I really like the way that this piece looks from far away. It kind of looks like a screen printed art piece, which I wasn't intending to do, but I don't mind it. This next piece really made me realize that I can paint, <laughs> even if it's only a little bit. I hadn't really done a whole lot of painting before uh, this whole project. Uh, maybe in passing and, and for like draw this in your style challenges if you saw my last video, but this one here I really like. This one's got to be my favorite. I, I enjoy it a lot and it turned out exactly how I wanted it. For day 13 I was inspired by vintage floral stamps. So I took that here and then I kind of stuck with a cooler color scheme and then I penned in the flowers with a thin Sharpie. And not too much to explain for this one. I ended up learning that I don't have to take my art so seriously and sometimes I can just doodle for fun. And even though it wasn't the most artistic thing, it ended up making me laugh because the ghosts looked like they were at a rave. And for this next one, I remembered that I had colored Sharpies. So I took those and decided to doodle. And here we have a bunch of different types of teapots. I originally didn't like this piece, but I realized that I didn't like it because it didn't feel finished to me. So after I added the border and then I guess those outlines around each of the teacups, I liked it a lot more, which is so interesting for me to learn. <laughs> Now this one was really cool. I used some more neon um, index cards and cut them out to little orange shapes. And then I used some color pencil and gel pens for all of the extra details. I like the way that it all layers on top of each other. And I think because it's neon, it makes it pop a bit more. I'm gonna be honest and tell you that I think that these next two cards are probably my least favorite of the challenge. I ended up missing a day and had to make up for it by making two extra cards. So I made these next two cards on the same day. Um, and I think they turned out okay. The first one, I, I think it's called a topographic map. It kind of looks like that. Um, and the second one was just, just a bed. <laughs> so maybe I was thinking about sleeping, I'm not sure. For day 20, I took one of the orange neon cards and decided to draw some leaves on it since the warmth of the orange reminded me of fall colors. I don't really know what to say about this one. I grabbed um, some Sharpies and markers and my white gel pen and turned on some music and kind of just went with it and this is what it ended up looking like. And for day 22, I was inspired by stained glass. So I found a couple references online for some lotus flowers and then just connected the lines in the background to make it look like stained glass panels. And when life gives you lemons, you paint them on an index card. <laughs> so I took some acrylic paints here and some color pencils and you can see more of that background, that kind of border background, um, just to finish off the piece. And the next day was a bit of window doodling. I was inspired by a few window doodles that I had seen on um, Google when I had searched like window uh, reference pictures. And this is what that piece ended up looking like. Not much to say here as well. Um, this one is just some more mindless doodling. And for day 26, I did a continuous line drawing of art, uh, of art. <laughs> of flowers and then I went back in with markers to add a bit more variation and color. 
I'm really proud of this one. This one I didn't use any references for and it was some more mindless doodling, but I think it turned out so nice. And because I like the last piece so much, I decided to do some more of it. So this one here is a bit more mindless doodling. Again, I didn't use a reference for this one and I'm really proud of it. I like that it includes the borders and there's a little sleeping bunny and it has all the flowers and I played with line weight. It's really cool and I like it a lot. For this next one, I followed a tutorial that was supposed to make it look like water. Um, I don't think that I got the water look, but I had a lot of fun doing it and I really liked the way that it ended up looking. For some reason, I got it in my head that my last day should be something grand, that my last art piece would be something to just kind of finish off the whole challenge and make me feel like I accomplished something and this is wonderful, but it didn't end up turning into that. I, I did feel accomplished. I, I don't want to say that I didn't, but the piece that I ended up making for the last day um, didn't really meet my expectations. And I guess that's okay because in order to grow as an artist, I need to make quote unquote bad art. So every piece of bad art that I make is another step towards becoming the type of artist that I want to be. It's another step towards kind of cultivating my skills and feeling more confident in the different mediums and the different crafts that I do. Overall, I feel like this challenge was a really good way to figure out what kind of things that I like creatively. I learned more about what kinds of mediums that I like to use, like using more acrylic paints and color pencils. I also learned what I like to look at in terms of art, so line art and, and bright colors and variation inside of my art pieces, which really will only help me in the future with my design and how I make future projects. I'm just really happy that I made it through 30 days. I, I know it's not the full 61 of the challenge, but I haven't really committed to like a long form art challenge like this before, especially something that is more so your traditional art, like painting and sketching and things like that. Um, if there is ever a bookbinding challenge that's like a long form bookbinding challenge, I would love to do that. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I haven't found it. If you know of where I could find that, please let me know in the comments down below because I would love that. And if you liked the video, it would mean a bunch if you gave the like button a little boop. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. And if you're thinking of trying the Index Card A Day Challenge, let me know in the comments down below. See you next time.